Judith, and Gwyn Ushla, McLean, Dalty, Agus Cardia, Hakan, Corinne Gaelica, Larfall, Ta An Achos Orum, Fuelcha Akuriv, and Machin Dini, Egar Gade Okaj Gahangak, Egor Le Institute, and Leon Erini Larfo, Agus Tasulagum, Nak Mayan Show, Akan Tus Lakur Lanunak, Idam Wijfain, Agus and Rin Changa, Don Toki. On behalf of uh, Liverpool Comrade and Gaelica, I'm truly delighted to welcome so many of you to our first bilingual event in cooperation with the Liverpool Institute of Irish Studies. And I hope that this will just be the beginning of a continuing co cooperation between ourselves and the Irish language department for the future. Ta tria cavlin o honig mareid na cra cun Gaelica a wunu um, San Institute, Agus Kursi Kursi a foil don fobel, Sprag she sim war um, in a kuch dalti, Agus ta quidaku, fos ag frastal ar a gear Agus ar nupi le horacta. It's 30 years since Mairead Nacra came to teach the Irish language at the Institute, and she offered courses to the general public. She inspired a lasting interest in her pupils, and some of them are still attending our chat groups and our reading circle. Ta crave Sean O'Donovan de Conrad Gaelic Larfal, ta resh kuna changa kunkin le bresh le cablein anish, uin a gahelak nakmaran Tony Bertel o meal now no karahain, in ye da rave hakti and Dr. Brian Stoll. Filuar and Ducus Ellen Wanin, Leve, Iganus, are Athfiokan and Mananish An. Liverpool's Sean O'Donovan branch of Comrade Gaeliger has been promoting the language for over a hundred years. Our late chairman, Tony Bertel, taught for 30 years from 1991. After his predecessor, Dr. Brian Stoll, returned to his native Isle of Man to lead the revival of the Manx language there. When Dr. Stoll, Irithna Blianta Jacra na Trablogi, agus vi egan do a anima corsi a athru go leen Celtic in ye bagati, lan bagati ar ai in ye sin, ac o lugt takir to pella rangers an o'r show. Dr. Stowell taught during the difficult years of the Troubles. He was forced to change uh, the name of his course to Celtic Studies uh, due to threats. Um, threats continued thereafter, but from Rangers football supporters after that. Taresh Chinia Spronach, Agus Bas, Tony Bertel, Ath Vunioth Koshta Nua de Quij, Comrina Gaela Galafo, Fui Kahailacht, Thomas Ryan, um, Agus Eag Chumanch, Agat uh, Eg Fwinov, Ag Chumantus, Siobhan Macaulay, Alan, Ijanta Le Dominic Buckley, Agus Mifain, Ag Rachtel Rangana, Alina, Agus Isla High. Following the sad illness of Tony Bertel, a new Comrade Gaelic Committee was formed under the chairmanship of Thomas Ryan and driven by the energy and enthusiasm of Siobhan Macaulay, who together with Dominic Buckley and myself continued to run classes on both online and face-to-face. My yawl are in tale of ard, arangana, archioch munchori nua imlina. Daniel White, Kevin Cuddy, Agus Quiver Withers, as Agus Tassoul again, a darishkint, a natu, agus a lachnu snabli into a mac rowin. Um, le tilu imakti ga hangach ma sio, e gwa leshen institute ma sfeidio. Because of the high demand for classes, we have recruited new teachers, Daniel White, Kevin Cuddy and Quiver Withers, and we hope to strengthen and widen our offering in years to come 
with more bilingual events like this in cooperation with the Institute if it's possible. Um, Kurimich tu senesh le kuri laha garaj imela egal runi onorak Patrick Clancy spragha eg oba Tony Bertil aren chonka negeliga ar kanuinch skausi lafol. Be our priv imakt in yeshin kanch and Dr Owen Hearn and Gaeliga o rave star goji and larak. We begin now with a short presentation in English by our Honorary Secretary, Patrick Clancy, inspired by Tony Birtle's work on the Irish influences on the Scouse dialect. And that will be followed by our main event, which is Dr. Owen's um, talk on the development of the Irish language from earliest times. To conclude, there will be a vote of thanks from our Chairman, Thomas Ryan. So, Guramayagat, thank you everybody, and Lana Mejirai now, we'll continue on now, um, and please give a big hand to Patrick. Thank you. Eva Kaja, who is faulty go and gave lacked on Conrad Gale Galefall, lay an institute and Len Edinac Lairfall. Welcome, friends, hello, and welcome to the first lecture with Conrad Gale of Liverpool and the Irish Institute, the Institute of Irish Studies at Liverpool University. Is Misha Patrick, is Rooney me like Crave Shen O'Donovan a Lairfall? Lilin and Panjem, V. Mieg Sprakta and Fish and Tony Bertel are YouTube. August Hosimi Agstadia in a year shin. During the pandemic, I was I saw I was influenced by a video that I saw of Tony Bertle speaking on YouTube. I didn't even know that learning Irish was a possibility. And I started to study not long afterwards. In fact, Ishi Lawa, Tony Fincher, Elis, Nelachter Show. Tony's book is the inspiration for the talk today. And each Tommy Agfolum, Gwailiga, Le Shirley, August Kevin Freshen, Le Tribliana Anuis, Kahimi Ara, Tatnian Shego Mollum. Now, I've been learning the language for three years with Shirley and Kevin as well now, and for three years, and I'd have to say that I really enjoy it. Laura, me and you, Freen Gwailiga, August Scouse, Tashwim Vorigam, Sadaken. Today, I'm going to speak to you about Scouse and the Irish language, something I've got an interest in both of them. Is he showing cave after Don Lawrence in Nailga go quadly? This is the first time I've spoken in Irish in public to a big group of people. Kahimi a rago will me begging in nervous Achanish. My shame vey me agdol o Gaelic go bela anish. A little bit nervous, so I'll speak to you at English now. So, Toshin and Scale and Show. There's a plaque at Clan and Stock Gate in Liverpool that explains that. 1.3 million Irish migrants fleeing from the Great Under arrived there during the years 1845 to 1852. The current population of Ireland is just over 5 million, so just to give you an idea of how many people have actually come through the country. In the mid-19th century, Irish was a language spoken by millions of people in Ireland, particularly west of a line between Derry in the north and Cork in the south. These are the areas from which refugees arrived in the period of 1845 to 52, an influx of almost 1.5 million people from one country into a port with only 300,000 inhabitants would have had an influence on the way of the life of the local population. The use of not only the native Irish language, but also the particular dialect of English spoken by those arriving, Hiberno English, which phrases could be a mix of English and Irish words and often followed the syntax and grammar of Gaelic, can undeniably be demonstrated in Scouse phrases and words that exist in the present day. During the time I've spent learning Irish over the past few years, sometimes a word will jump out of a sentence or a conversation that's something I just assumed was a Scouse thing. And I'd hear it and I'd say, my mum says that or my nan says that. So I'm going to go through a few now. Some of which are agreed upon as being directly influenced by Irish, some of which even now online are causing some consternation as to whether they were or not. So I'll let you make your own decision on those ones. 
there's little documentary evidence of which language was spoken in the city, but we do know that the Irish language had no legal standing in Ireland and was discriminated against at the time. So in order to conduct business with state officials, there's pressure on people to learn enough English to get by at least. In the middle of the 19th century, both St. Patrick's Church in the Dingle and St. Anthony's Church on Scotty Road had enough, enough numbers of non-English speaking parishioners who couldn't attend confession and they had to petition Rome for priests that could understand and speak Irish. Such large numbers of Gaelgri would undoubtedly have influenced the local language in that of any community they encountered. Go jazz. It's a simple Irish term that means nice, pleasingly, attractively. Becomes the English term gorgeous. Also, there's a school of thought online that say in its original form, jazz influenced the word jazz, which means to make something nicer or more attractive. So grammar, something that any Irish language student here is probably shaking in the boots at the thought of me mentioning, <laughs> but uh, honestly, it's not too heavy. So pronouns. In English, you use the pronouns I, we, she, they, you. In Irish, I always struggled with this. We have me, midge, she, she, she'd, and then you splits into two, and you have a plural, two, and shiv, until it was explained to me that if you've got a Scouse accent, you already say I, we, she, they, and you say you and yous, which comes from the plural of you. And then this is the last bit of linguistics. I'm not a linguist. So the Indo-European schwa is just a really posh way of saying it. And in Irish, you have the rule, kale, kale, august lehen, lehen, which means broad, broad, slender, but slender. And it's just a simple way of allowing the spoken language to flow without a hard stop in it. So, for instance, this word, which means blue, is not pronounced gorm, it's gorm. And that influences the Scouse dialect in the word film, which is probably not as widely spoken all over the city, but in certain parts of the city, people will say film instead of film. And also in wider English with the pronunciation of the word sparring, for sparring, it's a dispute. Eh. So there's a phrase in Irish, Angabataya, which is, look at the beak on him. Well, it's the beak on him. <laughs> God being Hiberno English, saying for beak and mouth and air being on him. So God obviously is straight into Scouse language straight away. In Irish, things are on you, are at you. And that also feeds into the way that Scouse people would say, the gob on him, the head on him, the arms on air. This is one of my favourites, this. Smoishing, which means, that's good, is smashing. That's where the word smashing comes from. One from Shirley. A heap of money, slam arrogant, becomes slummy. And avach, which is not strictly the, way, the form of mach, but is used between friends and becomes wach, which apparently was so wide. It's not used much these days in Liverpool. People would probably say kid these days or lad but it was so widely used that people outside of the city would use it as an insult and that's probably why it fell out of favour. Fezog, which means beard and is used for face, Fezog, probably an older word that older generation used, definitely something my nan would have said. Now, the word slap hail, slovenly, becomes slap hog, which is a slovenly woman. And I think some of you might be able to see where I'm going with this. <laughs> that becomes slapper. And this is probably the best one, I think. I'm going to try my best to pronounce this. So that is antrahaka, which becomes, which means in the wrong time. It means something out of place, something late. And that becomes antwaki. <laughs> which I always thought was a misreading of the word antique, but comes from that Irish term. And this is the one that probably causes the most consternation amongst people online. And dig into, which is, do you comprehend or do you understand? Split off into two ways. Apparently, it went over the sea, over the ocean to America, where it became a digging. Do you dig? But what it and that is the one that people argue about online the most. But what it definitely did influence on this side of the Atlantic is twig. Have you twigged? 
Do you twig? Do you understand it? So there's bound to be many more things that your parents, your aunties or grandparents have said, and I would love to hear them after the talk. Sinead. Tammy Spincher are in Gant, I've had. Go round me on my get. It's like, as I stack them. Tammy Swim, I get to Gaelica. Scan it, Iana, and God QR. Are on poster, I guess Kuramid, Refos Hugget. So that's it from me, tired from all that talking. Thank you very much for listening to me. And if you have an interest in Irish, you can come and find me, you can scan the code on here, and we'll send you an email with details of the courses that Conrad Aguil will run. Put them, I guess. Thank you very much. Nish, <laughs> over. Not as exciting as it sounds, it's just water. <laughs> Dave. <laughs> um, thanks all for coming out. I'd like to reassure you all at the outset, I'll be speaking in Irish, but I'll also be speaking in English. Okay, so every slide or so I'll give the information first in Irish, but then I'll give all the same information in English. Okay, so you'll all be able to follow along. Uh, out of interest, who have we got here who speaks Irish or who's learning Irish in, the, in Shirley's classes, for instance? Okay, okay, right. Well, but we have a few people with, with, with no Irish. So don't worry, I won't leave you behind. Uh, and the talk today is on... Irish from prehistory to the present. So, Tosnoamid le Kest Rezunta Shimpli Kadi an Railge Kentus Avi Eke Ka Asar Hanig Shi Is Kestina Eid Sha Ata Augur Lesh Nikienta. So, we'll start with a straightforward enough question What is Irish? Where does it come from? Where did it originate? How did it originate? Right, and these are questions that have been asked for centuries. One early medieval scholar had the answer. Fi fragra na geshtina sha ila dienta amach ig skolare eirnach avi ig shkriav savan ish lua. Beder se shachthu ish no marshin. De rare on skolare sha kurach tush Lesh an Gaelge Sere or Sushin in her hog on Re Nimrod Tour Vobel. Now Maris Oldave, Tour Ulvor Bay and Tour Vobel, a hog on Kinadena, the rare lower Genesis on Vibla, on a Skorachach of Org and Nav. Gadisha, Vian Dowan, Ille er Ain Tonga a wine. Right there, scriptur. Ach nora chonic on tirna kadavi ayenavaka honic farag air frasker she on tour agus vor tanga on dawan illa. So, according to this uh, seventh or eighth century author, the origins of Irish lay in the biblical story of the Tower of Babel. And I'm sure you're all familiar with the story of the Tower of Babel, right, in the book of Genesis. Humanity decided to build a tower so big that it would touch heaven. Uh, until this point, uh, humanity had been speaking just one language. They'd all be speaking the one language since the Garden of Eden. And when God saw them building this tower up to heaven, he grew wrathful. He struck it down and he confused the languages of the people. And that, according to the book of Genesis and tradition for a long time, was how we ended up with, with lots of different languages in the world. Well, according to this medieval Irish tradition, there was a fellow there called Phineas Farsad, and he was tasked with putting together a new language for the learned at the Tower of Babel. And so he went around to all these new languages. And what was best of every language and what was widest and finest was cut out and fashioned into Irish. 
Torfui Terra and Art Special to a Tau Egan Quail, just a cool to show Tau Quail again, the Gach and Tonga Ella or Down, Er Lee Ach Neil Quail or Lehege, Lesh and Ratnish Marhample Near Tigger, good deal of fear, dear Negro of Quail, Idur and Quail, August Natanga, Britannica. Near of Ean Clue, Igna Quail, Na Igna Britannic, Grave Natanga of the All Artica, Quail to Good Lou, Lenachela. Near Hanig and Tiskind, Shin Gudian Neo Ish Deog, Aum in her hug, Tangolaha, Fui, Stadair, Comparadoc, Yenov, Er Tangacha, and the Horpa, Marian, Le Tangacha, only as Fada again, Kasul, the Sanskrit. On Te, a Yen, at Nubber's Tach, the Arnquail get not Tangoli, Garmanach, Daravanum, Johann Kasper Zeiss. Um, so, pay attention to the, 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 particular kind of place that Irish has according to this medieval conception, right? It is in a way connected to every other language uh, on earth, but they didn't have any idea that, for instance, it was closely connected to uh, Britannic languages to Welsh, right? Uh, it wasn't until very recently that anyone had any conception that the Irish or the Welsh had a conception that their languages were so closely uh, related to one another. That didn't happen until basically the 19th century uh, when you got the study of historical linguistics uh, and the discovery that a lot of the languages of Europe and Asia were related to one another. Uh, and the person who did the important work for Irish was a guy called Johann Kasper Zeus, a German. So, Dalsig Zeus, a Vagnum Opus, Grammatica Celtica, Sivlian Octae Quega III. Share the end she in a lahnig, nor go lerig she gdainach, gertanga, keltachi and grelge, August gerbald and more in a omadul in dorpochi. Marsh Grieg, John O'Donovan, far nor of ean dohi ne achanirid, madder le corsi tango lirte, ilervas and Ulster Journal of Archaeology. So this is what John O'Donovan um, himself uh, quite, quite uh, learned um, in linguistics. This is how he reviewed. Uh, Johann Caspar Zeus's uh, great magnum opus, Grammatica Celtica, uh, in the 1850s. What the Irish language is in itself and to what languages it has affinity are questions which have been frequently asked by the learned of Europe. The truth has at last, or sorry, at length been established by Johann Caspar Zeus, a native of Bavaria, in his great work called Grammatica Celtica, printed at Leipzig in 1853. O'Donovan goes on. It demonstrates the following facts. One, that the Irish and Welsh languages are one in their origin. And two, that this Celtic tongue is, in the full and complete sense of the term, one of the great Indo-European branches of human speech. So, is tongue a Celtic in Reilge? Irish is a Celtic language. Uh, is tongue in Orpoch i? It is an Indo-European language. What do all what does all this terminology mean? Well, Dethamish Saulug or Vowel Ian Ruelga the Heilach Moor Farshing. Winter at Oskapag or Farlahan or Grumpla and Down. So we can imagine Irish as a member of a family. Right? A big wide uh, a big um far reaching family that spread out across uh across the, the face of the earth. Is gar gheilte, jaharacha, agus jifuracha, le gheilge, eid, gheilge na halben, agus an mananish. So according to that conception, uh, very close relatives, brothers and sisters maybe to Irish, are Manx and uh, Gaelic na halbens. Is kol chachracha beider le gaelge iad na tangacha britnacha bratmish cornish agus britannish. Uh, so these are the Irish languages, maybe cousins, uh, Welsh, Cornish, and Breton. Agus is colina shesher no colina ochter no kian gaelte ele iad na finte tanga ind orpa ele. Uh, na tangacha ind iranacha, na tangacha garmandische, na tangacha idaldische, agus arilla. So it's a um, far more distant relatives, third cousins, fourth cousins, 
further on, are all these other language families, for instance, the Indo-Iranian, uh, Greek, Gregish, Idolish, uh, which is the uh, uh, Italic, uh, Germandish, German Germanic. And what are these language families? Well, so group are Germandish, fighter Nua Hongacha, Kusula Germanish, Olanish, Olivus Arnoig Berle. So in the Germanic family, we have modern languages like Dutch and German and of course English. Um, so group Idaldish, fighter Nua Hongacha, Frankish, Spanish, Portangalish, August Lahed. In the uh, Italic language family, we have uh, what we call the, the, the Romance languages, French, Spanish, Portuguese, etc. Er Erin on Shata Leride, Bugani Nis, Oiline, then Heilach Moor, Shah. Natangacha, Galer, of Ekentu and Shah. Gaelge, Berle, Rushish, Spanish, Bengalish, Hindush, Shilriach, Id Galer, on Stuck, Crean. Sha on Ind Orpish. Bahanga in Ind Orpish, Trada Rev, Achni Laureter and Nish e Leshna Kinta, Laureach e Timpler She Vila Blian Ohin, Sestep Lastuig, then Ver Hasp, Fuin Gaed Vilish Riv Christ, Vian Tangashin Squilte in a Fuhangacha. So on this, uh, we can see a, a, quite a nice illustration of, of this concept on this slide. All the languages that you he see here, from Russian to Bengali to English. Uh, they're all, they all come from this, as it were, this tree trunk of Indo-European. Now, Indo-European was, in fact, a language. It was actually a spoken language about 6,000 years ago. Um, it's obviously not spoken as a language anymore. Uh, and by about a millennium before Christ, so about 3,000 years ago, uh, the Indo-European had, had, had split into various different uh, languages. And here is how the map looked about 3,000 years ago. Shaw Maradeach on Mapa Sechead Vilish Riv Christ. Marshin, Keg Gemeder Gemuch Dakrad, Dakrucht, Ogiv, Credunt, Erin Gaed, Awark, Ogishivik, Ekfaulim Natanga, Ta Gael, Egelge, Lesh Natanga, Ella. Sure. Ta ir smi agus rinta na hind orpishe le fail fiu sa nua gaelge. So, as you're learning Irish and you think this is like something nothing I've ever seen before, you might find it hard to believe that it is in fact uh, related to all these other languages. But there are still the traces, even in modern Irish, of that Indo-European root. Uh, Marischrig Sanoli na as as one uh, expert put it, linguistic features and many lexical items of Irish were inherited from the ancestral speech group. Togamish and Fuckle Sha Naher. Mas Fowler Moore na Gaelgahu is Kinter Gorhanig to earn Fuckle Sha Hannah. Agus Bader Gornor to Latfein. Fuckle fear Kahiach Dom on Fuckle Sha, ni Vyaroig Mayor and Fuckle Shin Riev. Ach, Bader Gagarok, She Damyaka is a good good fum near a Sashana Gelga mar Nather. August Gareff Fokalon, Savan Verle Nader, Owner Honig and Fokal Nua Verle Adder. Honig on Da, Fokal Nather, August Adder, O Hus, O Fokal Indoor Puch. Bugani Kusulish and Fuckal Achrohehe Ata Ogin and Shah Nether. So the Irish, the modern Irish word for snake, Nather, as pronounced today, once upon a time was pronounced Nather. And it is related, it is cognate, as we say, with a word that in English used to be pronounced Nather. And as today said, Adder. Um, they both, basically both of those words come through a long and tangled process, but they do come originally from Indo-European. PIE here just means Proto-Indo-European. It's important to note that this is an, a reconstructed language, right? We don't have any written Proto-Indo-European. It's reconstructed from all this evidence of later uh, languages. And it was something like Nether 
uh, which gave Middle English Nether and Modern Irish Nether. Erin Gomachena to Fokalaginsa Gaelge, Tach, Agus Erin Gaed Aurk, Nika, Fogwil, Ean, Buintig, and Fokal Shala, Fokal in Ean Tonga, Ata Aon. Uh, we have this word in modern Irish as well, Tach, house. Uh, and at first glance, you might think this has no connection to any possible word that I will have heard of. Ach, Tagan and Fokal Shah, O Breher, Ind Orpoch, it comes from an Indo European verb, Teg meaning to deck, to thatch, to cover, or a noun, house, or roof. August is on breher kene in the orpokshin a faimid fokul kusula toga na ladina, that's where we get toga in Latin, a covering. Protego, on a faimid on fokul protect, protego, a Latin verb, but of course that gives us an English protect and words like that. Chomalesh na fokul berle, deck, August thatch, as well as the English words deck and thatch. Takol kahar few a tach sa hindush art a viter and fuckal tag. It even has a very distant relation in Hindi, in the word tag. Is a ankeel a talishin, not thief. In Hindi, that means thief. August is on fuckal shin. It is from that word that we eventually end up borrowing into English the word thug. So, those are some of the more far flung relatives of Irish. What about the closer family ties? Ernoig Kahamid Idir Yalu Idir an Keltish Inchach Shini and Tanga Alauriach in Erin, August of Ratten, August Keltish Namor Rhina, Shini and Grupa Tangacha, a Via Lord Er on Mor Rhine, Tangacha Kusul Le Ralish, Shini and Tanga, a Via Lord Egg, Asterix, August Obelix. Um, Right, so we make a distinction here between what we call insular Celtic, uh, insular from, from Latin insular, simply meaning the islands. So insular Celtic is that spoken in Britain and Ireland, and continental Celtic, uh, Gaulish, Celtiberian, Galatian here. Uh, and so it is in that family, the continental Celtic family, that uh, Asterix and Obelix would have been speaking, because uh, they are historical characters, as we know. Uh, ni laureater ain tonga the quid Celtic in the more Rhina, so law at all in Yovan. So, no continental Celtic languages is spoken now. Anyway, they haven't been spoken for many centuries. Ach, ta tunker le feshkin fos a loganamacha na franca marhon. But you can still see some uh, evidence in, for instance, the place names of France. So the place is here, Lugdunum, Shin Leon, on Lanyu, Dinbeh, uh, Tenby in Wales, Dun Aden in Alban, Edinburgh, and Dunangal in Erin, Donegal. All of these place names reflect variants of the same original Celtic word, Dunum, Din, Dun, meaning fort. Ta rind fuckle so gelge few go gap fogger is the eid on merle. So there's quite a few words in Irish that you might think are, are borrowings from uh, from English. Captor Gominic Gurkos a and fuckle sha, car the verlicus. It's often thought uh, that this is a is is kind of a borrowing from English uh, into Irish car for a for a motor car. August uh, Gurfar and Fuckle Gluishton Usaid, and some people would say, well, you should use a, a proper Irish word like Gluishton. Ach, Dent and Afirine. Is O Terma Keltach Karos a Hogan and Fuckle Shah. Hog the Rovanig and Fuckle Shah, O Nagalig, Ugs the Hogan Berla and Fuckle Own Latin. So I've put in some kind of dotted lines here to indicate. What happened here was that there was a, a Gaulish word, carros, which kind of obviously didn't mean a, a, an automobile back in those days, but a cart, chariot, any of these, uh, was borrowed into Latin, and that's where it was borrowed from into English. Modern car, modern Irish car, comes much more straightforwardly just from that Celtic root. Arish right? is fader. The Hangel Idenatanka Keltica Inchica a Ishkent Gabra Seler Snologanimnacha. Fighter Laganacha de Frulid and Von Terma Lis 
Snohaitana Sha. So again, place names often give us a good uh, overview of the, the connections between, in this case, insular Celtic languages. All of these have variants of the same word, lis. Again, it can kind of mean fort. Actually, in the Britannic languages, it, it, it comes to mean more like a court, a king's court. Miss Moore, County Watford, big, big, big fort. Uh, Miss Card, in the world. Miss Nacarriga, Fort of the Rocks. Uh, that was brought over, incidentally, with bilingual Vikings from Dublin. Uh, the Lizard Peninsula in Cornwall. Miss Ord. Irish speakers should know what that means, right? High Fort or High Court. Uh, and Les Ardieux in Brittany, uh, where they actually, despite the name, they speak insular Celt an insular Celtic language there as well, Breton, which is very closely related to Welsh. Now, Neil Shea Ro Silair, Cahan, Arhanig, and Tanga, Celtic, Gadi, Ilan, Naheran. Aum Egan, Riv, and Gaed, Ish, Ad, the rare Kosulachta. Torrent PSC Fianishe Aun a Hogan Latishkent Garhanig and Celtish Gaheran Sach Danach. So it's not too clear when uh, the Celtic tongue first uh, came to Ireland. It must have been somewhere at least before the first century AD, uh, but we're not exactly sure. But there are some pieces of evidence that might suggest it, it's more towards the later end. So maybe the first century idea, not too long before. And these pieces of evidence are one of them. Count as na PSC finisha sha is that an Eric Gawil fuckel er le on so gelge er naher arish agus art agus er noig ni river le hedi de anvehe le fall in Erin Riv. Da ma rode ig Riv an tanga Erin il on le fada is doch og gemiach na fuckel shat race. Dolas Aurk, Nogamedish Fos Aun, Nogamedish Teresh, Brianna de Frula, Hogant, or Hafein. Um, this is evidence because in Irish, in Old Irish, and still today we have these words, Naher and Art, for snake and bear. And as you may know, there's no snakes or bears mm -hmm. in Ireland. Uh, one would expect that if the language had been there for a long time, Either the, the words would just have been completely lost, or they would, um, what linguists call the reference, would have changed. Like the, the, the word would have stayed, but it would have come to mean something a bit broader, or you know, come to refer to something else. So that's one piece of evidence, but it's, it's, it's absolutely, it's still uh, very much up in the air and open question. Riv Tachna Keltische is Lair Griv Pubble Igmarachtoil Erin Ilan Nor Lauer Tanga Keltach. No tanga in the Orpoch view. Till if we shin again, no made. So before the coming of a Celtic language to Ireland, it is clear that there was a population who were speaking a non Celtic and even a non Indo European language on the island. So we'll I'll talk a little bit about that again some more in a moment. Is few tort fui dara gahachamer goil diasporacht aun fuin kesht ka rev on torin ider on gelge agus on vritanish. Is ein derke tradishunta lerehe er map a on sha na gorev on torin ider na tangache imwer erin er dus agus na or hasigdina in ir huishkert the bratna eg laurt gelge gadiger hanig unra o huishkert na herin aun egan sakuigu ish. Le DNI Tashimwita Egrind Tiangoli Gwil Shansonger Urver Urber and Huelge in Erin Agus in Eherna Halban Sanaum Kena Agus Gurb Eid Garov Hriacha Nahalban and Tiorin Ider on Da Rupa Tanga Shine Mapa B. So it's worth just briefly mentioning that there is a kind of a um a debate uh, going on between historical linguists, archaeologists, historians, etc. Where actually was the boundary between Gaelic and Britannic, between the two types of, of Celtic. The, the traditional view, map A here, um, is simply that Gaelic grew up on the island of Ireland, Britannic grew up on the island of Britain, and at some point, maybe in the fifth century, you had an invasion from Ireland, that's what these little arrows are here, uh, into Western Scotland. And that's how the Western uh, the people of Western Scotland were, were speaking Gaelic uh, 
uh, by the time the historical record uh, picks up uh, a few centuries after that. But uh, some linguists have suggested that, in fact, the evidence, if we, if we kind of forget medieval stories about invasion, about origins of people, that the evidence actually suggests that perhaps the Irish Sea there, which is not very broad at all there between Antrim and Argyll, uh, wouldn't have posed much of a boundary, that the highlands of Scotland would have posed much more of a boundary, and that actually maybe Gaelic just grew up in Ireland and in that part of Scotland quite naturally uh, over time, and there was no invasion. So that, but again, another open question. Uh, so very briefly, I won't spend too much time on any of this grammatical stuff, but you might be uh, interested to know. Ganeha Celtic at Segoelga, so Celtic um, uh, traits uh, in modern Irish. What happened with the Celtic languages very early on is that they lost the P sound, P. So whereas in Latin you have pater from where we get modern English words like uh, patriarchal and all this kind of thing, it got lost in Irish and we ended up with ather, so no P at the start there. Uh, the other thing that unites uh, not all Celtic languages in exactly the same way, but to put it simply, you'll see this in Welsh, for instance, modern Welsh and in modern Irish, initial mutations, and this is something we don't have in English at all. We only make changes to the ends of words in English. In Irish, you'll often see changes to the start of words. So the example here is Kirkig, fantastic city, Cork. But if you want to say in Cork, you say i Gorkig. You've got that G appearing there at the start, right? You can compare that next time you're driving into Wales and you see the, the Welcome to Wales sign, Croiso i Gumri. Right, the C has been replaced by a G there. We spell it slightly differently. We leave the C uh, in Irish, whereas in Welsh they take away the C. Uh, and also the copula. Uh, now I'm sure that's the bane of existence for those of you who are learning the language. But basically in Irish we have two different ways of saying to be. So for instance, I am an Irishman. We would use a different structure than saying I am currently standing here talking to you all. Right. Um, that's mostly disappeared uh, from Welsh, I understand, but it was there historically. Right, okay, so that is Irish as a, as a Celtic language, as an Indo-European language. We'll turn now to, to this topic, Aruha Satanga Unkaru Ish Araig, changes in the language from the 4th century onwards. But e an tahru is mo a harlas a trevshe shot nagar krohiach abiter don tanga agus gur tosniach a shkreiv. Is iad na kapeishi is shine at a gwin sa gaelge na rint in shkreivni on kahru ish. Ach ni in shkreivni iad shot san abiter rovanach. On chorus er will tahi a gwin inyo ach in abiter er le abiter nu a chumha gus specialte don gaelge shine an tom. The biggest, uh, or the, at least the, f the first, first of the biggest changes to happen uh, in this period, of course, is that Irish began to be written down for the first time in the fourth century. Uh, the oldest pieces of evidence we have for Irish are inscriptions that were made beginning in the fourth century, but these inscriptions were not made in the Latin alphabet which we're familiar with today for uh, writing Irish, but in a special newly formulated uh, alphabet, specially designed for Irish. This is Oam. Out of interest, who's heard of Oam before? Okay, half and half, I think. This is Oam. It's chorus, Shkriv Norachta, Tri Hishach, Eon Toam. Shkriach Fag imel nakliha, right? Mara ekter sefiktur sha, right? Is onan anlina sha? Is onan anlina sha agus imel nakliha? So it is a three D writing system. Om. Uh, it was written along the edge of, uh, you know, your, your stone, your rock, uh, and this line here is showing. 
So, of course, that's why I say it's 3D. It goes along two sides uh, of the rock. And you can see an example here on the right. O trevse fear lua, on trevse rovanach era lied, vi kaintori goelga savratan vyog, agus vi malartu kulturha, agus pulatula ershul idur on da ilan. Agus ta rint kluch oom le fall er futten bretne, gohorehe in alban, imanen, agus savratan vyog, agus ta rint vyog le fall is sasna freshen. Agus vi rint ka anagar dan ait in a will larfal anish. Se an kian is gure na kluch oom a hanahas er. In the so, Owen, although it was developed as a system for writing Irish, is found, as well as in Ireland, uh, throughout Britain, especially in, uh, in, in present-day Scotland, the Isle of Man, uh, and in Wales, but there are a few uh, in what is now England as well. And some of them were very close to where we stand today. The closest one uh, as you can see there from the map is a place uh, called Clochainog uh, in the very north um, northeast of Wales. This is it. It's Docha Gwil and Clochsha on Guigu non Sheo Ish. So Lashtig the Hriacha Mila on Art in Willamidanish. Vin inscrivene sha a yenev of when usad as an abiti abiter gaelach sha. This stone is probably from the fifth or sixth century. So within 30 miles of where we are right now, these uh, inscriptions were being made using this Gaelic alphabet. Rod alarian star rain na gaelga sa quid shot and fratin, which just something that shows the very deep connections between this part of Britain and uh, Irish. Ach ni o'n sin, ta'n cloch sio sgrifa in oom, corus gaelach, an tanem a ta tafeta ar gloch is anem Britannach e, agus ta'n tanem cena tafeta ar an gloch sin a bíter rofonach. Mar sin o'n aum is luahe fecamid an til tangachas ag tacht chan cín mar hema. Um, so not only do we see Owen being used so close, but the inscription is made using Owen, an Irish system, or Gaelic system, we should say. The name that's recorded on the, on the rock is a Britannic name. And not only is there Owen on the stone, but as you can see, there's also the same name written out in the Latin alphabet. So from the earliest period, we see multilingualism as a theme emerging. Sian dinna ata luite sin inscriven sha na dinna derv anem similinus toi sacos. Agus is forum a is forum a on on fucking shit toi sacos. Then terma keltoch the frunse no tierna. So the person inscribed in the stone, commemorated in the stone, is a guy called Similinus Toisakos. Uh, it's a Celtic uh, term, meaning kind of a leader or a prince or a bigwig. Um, and we can compare modern Irish Tishach, which comes from, from, from that word. Um, so you can see, just to, just to explain what's going on here, I mean, I picked the closest Ulm stone to Liverpool, which is nice, but it is a little bit damaged around the edges, so you're not getting a perfect message. But the Ulm starts down here, goes up the side, and then if they need more space, it generally comes down. Now, Bacorus on a usaida cantum, con animacha a grana erna cluck on a mora shaw. It was a very useful system for inscribing and commemorating your name on a, on a big hunk of rock. 
Ach ni rev si ro usaido con teks an anis fuide no anis casta of raka shias. It wasn't very useful for uh, writing down slightly longer works. Marshin on kuigu isharig hosniach on hosniach er gwelga ashkriv egwint usaida as an abita rovana. So from probably the fifth century on. Uh, Irish started to be written down using the, the, the Latin alphabet with which we're all familiar. So Fekamish Anish er Hample then Shan Gelge. We'll have a look now at a, a sample of the old of old Irish, as it's called. It's Don Isha Onleu Ish. This is a, a, a poem from the ninth century. Le Higme Gyota Biog Dreve. And those who are learning Irish, see if you can pick out any words. Mesha August Pangor Bon, Kechter Nather Fri a hand on, Beeth a venomous of Frischelg, Ma venoma cain im han herd. So Shansker Ahen Shiv Fuckle no ho on Shin. Shohe and Don Kena Ashrahag on Nua Ruelge, his Vader Kumpara, the end of Idar and Dal Lagan, Fekik Shiv Gwil Rind Fuckle Litraha, Nach Mor Marin Gain as a Shan Ruelge, August and Nua Ruelge. To write the calitrica, literate Ersh Ershli Diffrul Ach Fuim Nieter Eid Marangena. Um, Augusta Ryan Fuckel, or will come a umlon Diffrul or her. Mara Ekin to Ni Rev Turum Erbi, then real Grandma Dachshin, Quail the Quail, August Lahan the Lahan, Satrev Shin. Um, and there's an English translation here as well, of course, for those of you who don't uh, speak Old Irish. Might be a few of you. Um, those of you who know, don't say anything. Does anyone want to guess what this poem is about? This is written by a scribe working away in a scriptorium. Pangor Bon is the cat. The cat. So he's making a comparison between his, his craft and the cat's craft, right? So Tokter on Shana Gaelge er Gaelge uh, na Trevshe Lua Sha on Trevshe in a Shkriach on Don Pangor Bon. Riven Shana Gaelge de V on Gaelge Orsa. Teresh na Shana Gaelge on Neo Ish Kofadalish and Dara Ish Deog. Tokter on on Mon Gaelge er uh, er Verm na Tonga sa Trevshe Shin. On Dara Ish Deog di Dara uh, on Sheo Ish Deog. Shin Trevshe on Nua Gaelge Classicach. So you can see the different um, ways that the, the ways that the uh, the historic language has been divided. Old Irish is generally that spoken and written between seven hundred and nine hundred. So that is the period from which I, I, I just read the poem. Middle Irish nine hundred to twelve hundred. Early Modern Irish twelve hundred to six hundred. Sixteen hundred. Yes. Uh, and in this last one, early modern Irish, the Trevshe Nuachoyge Classicach, Bahanga Aulamha Chaidanach Ian Gaelge, a via cousin to Kuramach Erna Nahraha, Nadorha, a hagan or ain't tongue a lowerha, Ega Akma, Profesionta Scolari, August Philly. Ach, the Shachto Ish Derg, August Nagail, Nagail, Sainahe, Equivalent Lish, and Goro and Sassanach, hit on Sail Gaelach, August and Chorus Tangish in Asahele, O Hinele. Tana Kanalacha Regunacha Gaelge Eg Ferbert Gunnaf's Bloch, August's own Aum Shin, a Hagan the Kanunti de Frula, Gaelge the Moon, Gaelge Honacht, Gaelge Ola, August Arilla. Egan on Kena, Hosnig and Gaelge Egdolan Eg, Marhanga Litterhe, Leanta, Ernoig Safihuish, Denach, Eurocht, Er Haidanach, Rahu Arish, and Tanga August, August the Rare Choracha, Is Tanga Haidanach, Ian Gaelge Arish. So in the early modern Irish period, um, Irish was a, a, a standardized language that was carefully guarded by a class of poets and scholars. But as the, the native Gaelic kingdoms um, found themselves embroiled in uh, the struggle with the English crown, the, the, the whole kind of Gaelic world there fell apart and this centralized 
uh, standardized Irish also fell apart. And it's basically from about then, from the 17th century, that you see Irish really splitting into those different variants, um, which today, the, the three main ones that stand today are, are Munster Irish, Connacht Irish, and Ulster Irish. And at that same time, Irish uh, started to decline as a kind of a scholarly language, as a literary language. Now, in the 20th century, uh, there was, of course, an attempt by the Irish state to uh, put together a standard again for Irish. And in theory, it is a standardized language again. Right, Erin Schlaun on shot the Yenme Irocht Reint Vyog does not Araha Atatarish Tart Er Litru Nagelge Igahavna Drev Shi Galer Shot Aleru Dief Shot Sample Quid and Derishachtena Ta Aun and Tenem Breed. So in this uh, slide, I've tried to just very briefly, this is mostly for the Irish learners, uh, to just show you the differences between the different uh, periods uh, in terms of Irish spelling. This name here in modern Irish is Breed. This is uh, the name of St. Bridget, uh, whose day was just a few days ago. In Old Irish, that was spelled B-R-I-G-I-T. Now, V, Shevu, Aaron G, Shin. That G had Shevu, it was Lenighted, but it just wasn't included in the written language. So you had to know, you just had to know that. Um, the T at the end, because it's at the end there, was pronounced as a D. So actually, kind of pronounced more or less as it was spelt in the Middle Irish period here in the middle, Brihid. Over time, that GH kind of lost any, uh, any force, right? And you just kind of got a long I sound, and it turned into Breed. Right, okay, so Tommy Teresh, Chwyd wa ama a chahav er vonus keltoch in dorpoch na goelga. Ach er noig to rud egen ele aun a mean effect ege er ferbert tanga. Shine an pro shares in a dogan fuckelishtachs tanga o art in a ele. Talk to her eesachti, no fuckel eesachta or her shah. Ega have nablenta ta fuckel to reish, tach the shachs of elga on ladin, on berle, er noig. Ach peder, nias lu fuckel nor mar hilfa on merle. Eh, on shan iruish, shin tanga no luchtonig. On Frankish. So we've we've talked about the, the Celtic roots, the Indo-European roots of Irish, but of course there is some uh, other big process that tends to shape languages, and that's borrowing in terms, borrowing in words uh, from elsewhere. These are called loan words. Over the years, Irish has uh, taken in many loan words from Latin, from from English. Uh, but probably not as, as many from English as, as people sometimes think. I mean, we've seen some of those examples already, right? Uh, from Old Norse, from the, the Vikings, on Frankish, from the Normans, from French. Uh, on this slide, we have a few from Latin. There in Schlau non shot a right fuckle a honig on Latin. Now he nihein una ger fuckle. Aglasta August Fockel egg bint lesh and grease dirt, a ta egest and shodden than quid is small. It's no wonder that most of these borrowings from Latin are to do with, with the church or to do with Christianity. Shansku will shift to raise Rodagan a hort free dara, Rodagan at Connus or Harlish egg or Honig on Fockel Cask on Fockel Latin Pasca. How did we get Cask from a Latin word? Pasca. Well, could the heart air on Lian Quikhead, Ni Revan Fum, Pa, Aon Sukhelga, in Eacher, you might remember I mentioned earlier, we didn't have uh, the P sound in Irish until about the year 500. Incidentally, this is very good evidence, if any were needed, that Christianity arrived in Ireland before the arrival of the P sound into Irish. So when Pasca was taken into to Irish, became Cosk. Le tacht no normanic, sadara ish deog, honig alon fuckle frankisha is jaxagelge, na fuimina erle shin atasa rankish, an uim sh is chambre, or the chance, shkriach le s eed sagelge, chambre, chance. August an fuim je e jehan, no jean, 
Scriach e shin le es comar, because as, as shin a vayamid antanum cotient a shin shon. So with the coming of the Normans in the 12th century, we, uh, there was an influx of, of French words into Irish, and those particular pronunciations in French, like the sh in chambre, for instance, written with an S in Irish, chambre, they mean the same thing, a room. Uh, and from the common French name, Jehan, um, it's a two-syllable name back then, but of course in modern French that's Jean, uh, gave us Sean. Ach, i dianta na Frankische, na Ladina, agus an Verla, ta rind fuckel sa coelga nach revel na ontus, nor hanig o tanga keltachele, nor hanig o tanga indor bochele few. So as well as all these words from French and Latin and so on, there are a number of words in Irish that didn't come from another Celtic language, didn't come from another Indo-European language, haven't, weren't there from the beginning. Tascata biog desna fuckel na fáil sa gaelga agus ta grúpa ar le aimsihe ag sano li grúpa fuckel ag bwint le creaturi mara. Bradon, salmon. Glumach, lobster. Perton, crab. Scadon, herring. Is Kosul Gerhanig the Fuckel, Shaw O Tanga, Nav Keltuch, Nav in Dorpoch, a V A Kind in Erin, Riv Tacht and Relge. It seems likely that these words came into Irish from a non Celtic, non Indo European language that was being spoken in Ireland before the coming of uh, the Celtic language to Ireland. The fact that they are all to do with, with creatures, right? sea creatures, uh, is interesting. In the hound is feder griv, denre ig marrocht all in erin gadi an sheo ish deag no marshin. A vi tanga nav indoor puk marhanga What this also suggests, more interestingly, because you remember that we didn't have a p sound in Irish until 500. So how could we have borrowed perton before that point? So what this suggests maybe is that in Ireland there was a non Indo European population still speaking this language, whatever it was, in Ireland up to at least the, the 6th century. Right, okay, we're beginning to wrap up now. Er noig ni feder le roof in Gaelge a chur a laher gan tracht a yenav er ma na Gaelge. Ta an scale bronach narach sin er olis a gain galeer. Nilach timpel er shacht o tri vila din in erin a ta an Gaelge mar fri of hanga a cu. Egan on Kena Ton made Dina a Lowry in a Hilget, Mardara Tonga, Terrestrial Suez. So, of course, it can't really give a, a presentation in Irish without mentioning the decline of the language. Uh, this sorry uh, state is probably known to us all. I won't go into too much detail. Just to note that there's only about 73,000 people uh, in Ireland who actually speak Irish as their primary language. At the same time, the amount of people who speak it as a second language and have interest in the language, that has gone up. August, I don't want to leave you in that note. Istanga bio briever i anghelge erlan schlitter. It is a lively, alive language uh, in a lot of ways. Uh, is anoin on Eva a mechagot o finchi orhe ni tanga shan ashenta shan i'm sure he in helge ta shi fos i ahru agsig forbert so uh, despite the image you might have from 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 some sources uh, it is not an old fashioned uh, or conservative language it is still changing it is still uh, evolving here are some of the fra uh, the words or phrases that have been brought into irish Recently, erach is a very old Irish word, in fact, but much like gay in English, it meant happy and, and, and carefree. So it has kind of been influenced by English there, and they've taken erach uh, to be gay. Earworm is a recent one. Uh, people know what an earworm is? Yeah. Uh, uh, something, a song that gets stuck in your, your head. It's so, it's so catchy, right? Uh, so this is on Twitter. People came up with a, a version of that. Eistfeist. Uh, and then there is 
there was uh, a bit of debate about when, when, when Brexit kind of came about and there was a question of how are we going to talk about this, Askoelge on the news and so on. The one that won the day was Brat Macht, Bratten, Britain, and Imacht, going. Uh, but there were some other options as well, Sasamach, Breilu, uh, and I do recommend having a look at Katie Nilinchik's uh, video on YouTube about this. Uh, she's very good. Right. Vishay Kutienta Safihu Ish Agastashi false Kutienta in your Igudana Orehe Kurila Herger Tanga Arsa Kamadach Ian Grelga Tanga Fear Heltach Nachulean Arreha Teresh Tach Derlish Nikienta Ach Marain La Hain Tanga Ella is Chimera Ian Grelga is Hybrid E Agasmas Mianlinga Vanhig She Bio Near Hertuin Kahavle Aulista Marud Perkalain final to e, mas me and live gavanig she bio usadigi gabioveri. So it was very common in the 20th century and is still quite common in some quarters to treat Irish as, as, as just this, this kind of ancient, almost mystical language that hasn't changed for many centuries. But just like any other language, Irish is a chimera, it is a hybrid. And if we want to keep it alive, we shouldn't treat it like some kind of porcelain thing that we have to be careful around. If you want to keep it lively and alive, speak it lively and alive. So Aaron, note the shin on that note. Fagig may shiv le piesa scriv norachta o uder biover il tangach. I'll leave you with a bit of writing from a particularly lively and multilingual uh, writer of the 20th century, Miles Nagopolin, aka Flann O'Brien, aka Brian O'Nualine. Nadini Nagoilgori, Nadron Wilshiv Abel to Dianova Makain Tonga Ta Arkaint on Shah. Lehig me os arde. Brian, woof woof. Sir Harvey, down you rebel cur. I was riding by and heard you make what sounded like a seditious speech. Who is this person you mentioned, Sean Brogue? Sean O'Diver Kadishata Raige in Anamadil. Eamon Achnik is full of Skarhula and Fiest Misha Eg Ahrish Machud Filirta, Sassanig the Rapin Mar the Rapin Shan Brogue. Tygeen. He was talking about boots, sir. <laughs> sir Harvey, you can tell that to the judge. That. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Everybody here is under arrest. <laughs> I will teach you to be disloyal. Quick march. Exeunt Guduach. Gormagwif, thank you very much. <laughs> oh, yeah. But uh, should we? Okay, yeah. Should we take some questions? Yeah, my dad. <laughs> Thomas. After I left school, secondary school, the script in the Irish language changed. Yeah. I was brought up on a, an earlier script than the script that we got now. How old was that script that we learned at that time? Yes, so up until the 1950s, I think maybe the 1960s, uh, as part of that kind of um, the building of the Kaidan, the, the making of the, the standardized Irish for the 20th century, they dropped an older form of the script. Um, you might know what it looks like just from, you know, go, to, go to an Irish pub in Liverpool and you see the way the, 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 the words are written out. The thing is, that is not actually a different script. It is still the Latin script. Um, and, you, you know, you can see here, I mean, maybe you can't, <laughs> this is not the, be the, the, the best example, but that Latin script changed over the centuries, and there was just a kind of an idea that uh, I suppose it was part to, to do with the 19th century Gaelic revival and romantic ideas. They wanted Irish to have its own script, but it was, it did originate in the same place, which is uh, you know, basically how people wrote, uh, used the Latin alphabet in medieval manuscripts, basically. Hmm. Can I say thank you? That was just wonderful.
Uh, this one, yeah. just the image, you mean? Yeah. Uh, take down this person's name. Mina Sundberg. I just, I, you know, I just found it online. I can't take any credit for that. <laughs> yeah, it's it's a great representation. It's a you don't like mine. Wales. Yeah. Um, do you think that they, they, maybe the people who migrated brought the only stones with them, or do you think they just used them? They just brought their knowledge. You mean physically brought the Ulmstones? stones? Yeah. No, no. They're definitely you wouldn't bother. You can you can you can find a rock any, anywhere. Um, I mean, it's an open question. Where Ulm was invented? It could have been invented in what is now Wales, because there was Irish speakers there. Um, and there's no reason why it couldn't have been invented there or in Ireland. You know, I'm not saying definitely was Wales or anything. Um, but, you know, it's just a period where the Irish Sea is no kind of barrier, really. Um, and there's back and forth all the time. Yeah, there's a feather back there. Oh. Uh, it can be, yeah, just that, that they're in different populations and they're not kind of talking to one another anymore. I mean, just imagine tomorrow something terrible happens to Britain and the only people left are the Scousers and, I don't know, uh, people down in Cornwall or something. And then fast forward a few hundred years and they'd be talking completely different languages, you know. Uh, so it, it's, it's, a, it's a long and slow process, but it's basically, if you think of dialects today, the way people speak different uh, English in different ways. That's it. Yeah, a dialect is a, is a language in waiting. Yeah, I'm now from Yorkshire. <laughs> 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 there's a fellow at the back there. What's your favourite Irish English? Uh, I, I don't know, favourite, I've, I've run into trouble a number of times throughout the years because I say things and people over here don't understand what I'm saying. So if I were to say, oh, she, you know, she was given out to me, do people know what that means? I mean, she was berating me, she was uh, complaining, nothing else. <laughs> but people don't understand that over here. Or, you know, we, we have a number of those things. Uh, it's the only one I can think of off the top of my head. Yes, this one, gentleman here. Yeah. There was a map of Ireland with the cross in the middle. Uh, this one? And mostly oh. 19, 19, 19, yes, yeah, 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 yeah. Mostly in Donegal and the west. Yeah. And then fast to the north, in the top right hand corner, do you want to see that Ireland was then speaking, spoken then maybe in Ballymena? Or am I missing something there? Actually, a green patch. Yeah. It does look like that, doesn't it? Uh, and it, to, to be perfectly honest with you, I'm not too sure about the situation in 19... I'm not, I don't know enough about the situation in 1911 to, to give you a very detailed answer. But I mean, this was the situation in 1911. It continued to erode. Uh, I do. I did stick a few maps in at the end, actually. I think in parts of Northern Ireland, there were kind of discrete, small the the place name yeah. no no that's what i'm interested finally i'm interested in but you can hear the the similarities there. I'm interested in the loss of the sea. Yeah. In 500, I'm not closest, and this seems appropriate to get Kenneth Haney into conversation. He writes a lovely poem called Brook about the um, the place in Central Area, and there he talks about the loss and the gain of languages across, say, Norse, English, and the various Indo-European, and he mentions the GH. 
Because that sound for non locals is quite a difficult sound. Yeah. A question. So for the GH, do you refer to it as Chevu? Chevu, yeah. Okay. And for an English speaker, it's it convenient. Yeah. Is it just the GH or is there a sound to it? Uh, it, the problem with modern Irish, you can see that the th one of the difficulties with Irish spelling is that it has been written, as you've seen, since, you know, uh, the very early Middle Ages. And so some things get lost. And, and so a GH in some names, so for instance, my name, don't, don't pronounce that GH, Owen, E-O-G-H-A-N. Uh, if it's at the start of a word, you would pronounce it R. So <laughs> I always, this is one of the first things I teach my students, these sounds. And usually they can't hear the difference between a CH and a GH. And I'll, I'll do them both for you now, see if you can hear. Huh? That's a CH. Huh? That's a GH. Yeah. The is something which helps you probably find more manageable. Yes, the CH certainly. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yiddish as well. Yeah. Well, <laughs> the standard, I mean, the standard is it's a bone of contention to this day. What happened was, so, you know, on, on, until kind of the 17th century, you just had a very kind of cohesive Gaelic culture. And then various events in the 17th, 18th, 19th century led to that, you know, Irish just really splitting up and being talked, you know, fast, if, if that had continued like that, and you fast forward another few hundred years, you've got three different languages. The, the people who came up with the standard tried to please everyone and ended up pleasing no one, basically. Uh, in my talk today, I uh, violated the standard a number of times. Uh, I said some monster things that, you know, uh, you, you're not supposed to say according to the standard, but it's just kind of because the people who really speak Irish, the, the true speakers who are left are from these regions. Uh, there is a understandable and I suppose and correct really um, feeling that you shouldn't say to them, no, don't, don't talk like that, the way you were raised to talk, you should talk, you know, it's impossible to kind of reimpose a standard really, uh, unless you're a 17th century French or English king and you just say, tough, we're, we're speaking on London English now, you know. Um, yeah. oh, okay, should we say one more, one last one, yeah. I mean, in the 19th century, in, in the early, I, don't quiz me on the dates now because I, I won't have this uh, correct, but in the early 19th century, free primary school education was brought in, I believe, across Britain and Ireland. Uh, and in theory, that was a good thing. But what happened in Ireland was that uh, you had to speak English in school and you were not allowed to speak Irish. So that's actually, I mean, I, that's actually a very underplayed reason why Irish declined, I think. You know, compare people always talk about the famine and the migration and so on, but uh, that. Yeah, yeah. So that was hugely important. I mean, and just so many other uh, reasons. You know, I mean, I, English had been the language of the cities uh, for for centuries at that stage. It was the language of. The, the richest part of the country was the language of the, the new media. As soon as they started printing newspapers and things, it was in English. So it was kind of, uh, <laughs> didn't, didn't have a chance, really. Yeah. Right. Shall we leave it at that? Uh, Tomas, did you want to come up? Dear Eve Galer, how are you? Thanks, Tomas. Hi, everybody. I'm Tom. Uh, I'm chair of the Conan O'Gale branch here in Liverpool. It remains for me to close out today's event. I think you'll all agree that we've had two wonderful talks this afternoon. 
and learn much about various aspects of the Irish language today that I never knew. I would like to thank Patrick Clancy for his informative talk on the number of words of Irish origin that have crept into the Irish language, and particularly into Scouse. I had no idea that there were so many words involved. I would also like to thank Dr. Owen Ahern from the Institute for his most interesting talk on the history of the Irish language from ancient times to the present day. I am sure that like me, you have learned a lot about the origin of the language and the mutations that have taken place down the centuries in this sometimes rocky journey to what is had today. I would ask you to please join me in another round of applause for our two speakers. I have a few acknowledgements to make if you bear with me. I would like to thank the university for allowing us to view their premises today and for the provision of the refreshments. There is so much demand for space at the Liverpool RE Centre at the moment that we are unable to accommodate us today. I would like to thank Professor Peter Sherlow, the Director of the Institute of Area Studies, for facilitating this event. Without this, his input, it might never have happened. It is the first jointly hosted event between the Institute and Conan O'Grailge, and I hope it's the first of many. I would also like to thank Viola Segaroth, PA to Professor Peter Sherlow, and Gerard Diver, Strategy and Innovation Officer here at the Institute, and the Institute backroom staff for their help and support in setting up and preparing this event today. Conan O'Gallagher Liverpool can be likened to the Phoenix Board as we arise from the blow of losing our only Irish language teacher, Tony Bottle, at the beginning of COVID in 2021. However, we have steadily risen from the ashes and currently we have four volunteer Irish language teachers who struggle to keep up with ever increasing demand for Irish lessons. This number will reduce to three teachers next year as Shelley McDermott retires this summer. If you think that you or anybody you know can help us with teaching Irish at any level, we would love to hear from you. It is most encouraging to see a great, such a great turnout today. Without your participation, these events would not be worthwhile. And I thank you wholeheartedly for coming along. Please keep a lookout for our next event and come along and support us again next time. Finally, as today's talks have been themed on various aspects of the Irish language, I think it's appropriate to finish off with a short poem in Irish about the Irish language. The poem I have chosen is entitled Lower on Lom or Speak Irish with me. And like much old Irish poetry, the poem is passed down on, on Melodish or by word of mouth. And the name of the poet is Long Lost. In the poem, the poet pleads with his sweetheart to speak Irish with him in his beloved native tongue. Lower on Gwilgalom. O Lower on Gwilgalom, a quid McKee's store. Tonga laur ma vahir lum in air and glass fado. He see in tonga vain or shinchery on kind is milch glower. O laur on tonga girl galum is bundam cree on brown. O laur on girl galum is he in tonga heart na gale on be a vain is arse lin. All a faller food on tail. A storm will cree his banakort. All in oi on corn. Or will say tail in tongue of morrow. Or tongue of fain the foil. 
Shinoel. Thank you very much.